evening, everybody. We're so glad that you could join us. Uh, we're Red Cedar Chamber Music, and we're going to perform our program Bieber, Bach, and Beethoven for you this evening. Uh, we're broadcasting live from our Iowa City home, and we've got um, teenage boys on tech, as well as, as musicians with us this evening. Uh, but our first number will be just a duo, primarily. Oh, let's see. Programs. If you'd like to download or view a program, uh, there's a link to our website in the description box below, or you can just go to our website, www.redcedar.org. And also, emergency. there's an emergency link at the bottom of the description box as well. Just in case we have some horrible technical issue and we have to stop this stream, then we can try to come back up on the other stream. So you could find us there, but that's the worst case scenario. So this is our 10th live stream concert, uh, our second performance of this program. And we did have one snafu, which would have been very nice to have that emergency link for. Um, these performances uh, will, will be available um, following the performance for, for re-viewing um, on YouTube. The first piece on today's program uh, by Heinrich Bieber requires a little bit of, of introduction. And um, I would say that there's actually our program today includes a third page of program notes, which is a page uh, about a project, a collaborative project that I did with a good friend, Philip Wharton, who is a wonderful composer and artist, violinist. He has been a guest artist with us uh, with Red Cedar Chamber Music, and he has composed for Red Cedar Chamber Music. Um, he's someone I've known for 30 years. Um, and I've been playing and promoting his music that entire time. And we did a wonderful project between 2008 and 2013, um, creating pieces of music that integrated words, art, and music. And Philip is an incredibly creative person, and so the art aspects, it, it, was, a, it was a great project. This piece that you're about to hear was part of that project. It was um, intended in the beginning to be a piece which the music was supplied and the verses were supplied and then local art students would supply the artwork. Now we've performed it with chamber orchestra and we've performed it as a duo and it's been performed by other people. Uh, we've performed it as a piano trio many, many times over the year. Mir and I uh, play this um, a lot for, for school children, sometimes as young as preschool age. Um, and we have decided that given the situation that we might be facing next year where we might not be able to visit schools, that we should um, develop this piece further as a curriculum item. It's an amazing piece of music, which was written in 1669 by Heinrich Bieber, who was a great, great violin virtuoso. And um, it was Philip's idea to make a modern setting of it. Now, what you're going to hear tonight is, is not incredibly modern, except with a few twists. One of which is that our good friend Janet Burroway uh, wrote in 2012 verses to go along with the music. The characters, as you can tell from your program, are all mostly animals. The verses are appropriate to each. And because we wanted to produce this in a live stream event, and we didn't have access to young children, we can get our teenagers to do some things, but not this. We asked Philip to create artwork for each of the verses. And he had created a cover art um, uh, you know, for the score when we, when we first published this. Um, but Philip is quite an artist. He grew up in Decorah, Iowa, um, and his grandfather was, was, uh, was uh, the head of the art department there for decades. He was quite an artist. And Philip does, does 
a lot of uh, work with visual art. In fact, one of the books in the uh, project that you can read about in the program notes it was published by College Street Music. You probably can't see it, but that's us <laughs> right there. And it's The Perfect Pig, um, a story by Janet Burroway and illustrations by Philip Wharton. So the two of them collaborated on this children's book, which we published. And um, at any rate, that's another piece that can be either played for a chamber orchestra or a piano trio. Today, it's just the two of us. And so we hope you enjoy Bieber's Sonata Representativa and the accompanying art by Philip Wharton, which was created just for this performance. Ignaz Franz Bieber von Bieber. If by chance you think so many names are gross, pull up a chair and listen close. The Bieber in my name means beaver, and that means I'm an overachiever. Although, to make my music great, I hardly ever hibernate, but sit composing all year long so you can hear the forest song. My name is Heinrich Ignaz Franz Bieber von Bieber. First, let's dance. ravishing tune, beguiling, appealing, enthralling, compelling, more famous at night than the sight of the moon. <laughs>
I like my caterpillars hairy. I like my larva squishy, very. Cuckoo. My song is hiccups and a hack. Two toes point four and two point back. Cuckoo. When I lay eggs, I think it best to lay them in some other nest. Cuckoo. I'm very famous for my flock, but this is what I find a shock. Of all the birds that sail and swoop, why should my name mean nincompoop? In a soup of a swamp in my kingdom Caribbean, where you've never been because you're not an amphibian, everyone calls me the fabulous frog, for my digits are webbed to hold on to my log. And I don't need a tail, but my tongue is so awesome, I pick little bugs the way you'd pick a blossom. I puff out my throat, but don't try it, you'll choke. And I let out a purely fantabulous croak. If you heard it, you'd probably fall on your knees. There have been occasions it toppled the trees. Oh, it riddles and tickles the length of the bog. It's no wonder a prince would turn into a frog. <laughs> Hens I have are a giggling gaggle. They peck and scratch and screech and haggle. And when I get a hankering for them, I call them with my cock and worm. And if some noisy chanticleer comes by and, by and spoils the atmosphere, I kick up my claws and whoop them good, cause I'm the cock of this neighborhood. <laughs> Don't give a hoot. My voice is light, my step staccato, my plumage bright, and here's my motto. 
Puff your breast and shake your tail and thank your stars you're born a quail. <laughs> I'm simply exhausted. I can't move a muscle. Oh my, I wore myself out on a morsel of gristle, that's why. I'm thinking of giving my paws a good washing, perhaps. Or maybe just crashing, because I am smashing at naps. I'd jump on the shelf, but I can't really bother. No, sir. What's that on the leather? A feather. See whether I prefer. Musketeer of the living room, with my admiral frog and my colonel cat, and a rooster feather in my hat. I install my troops on the Persian rug, then I aim and fire at a flying bug. I advance in a crawl, I creep and couch, I yell, attack, then I take the couch. So rummy tum tum, boom diddy boom, I'm off to invade the dining room. wonder of ways you can dance. The mazurka from Poland, the can-can from France, the maypole, the polka, the waltz, and the jig. The Hungarian chartus is still very big. In old Puerto Rico, they shake to the bomba, whereas in Brazil, they go in for the samba. In Bali, Lagon, Madrid, the fandango. In Moscow, the troika. Cordoba, the tango. And if you don't know how to dance, you just fake it. For even in breakdance, you don't really break it. So get up and swing, do si do or gavat. Go ballet or belly, but give it a shot. <laughs>
work um, is also from the Baroque era, and this is another non-traditional setting of a Baroque work. Um, the uh, Bach, Bach wrote two different kinds of sonatas for solo instrument and accompaniment. One was a sonata for, let's say, viola da gamba and basso continuo, and the other was a sonata for, solo, for viola da gamba and harpsichord obligato. Now, the sonata you just heard, the Bieber, was a sonata for violin and basso continuo. So basically, I was playing the bass line, and it would also be joined by a harpsichordist who would just be reading the bass line but filling in the chords above it based on the figures which Bach supplied in, uh, underneath the bass line. So that's one way of accompanying. But in Bach's time also, the harpsichord obligato idea was that uh, the harpsichord, instead of being a bass line in chords, was two independent voices. So these sonatas would be played by the solo instrument, in this case viola da gamba, and harpsichord. But in uh, our first season as, as directors of Red Cedar, we did a project that I had been dreaming about for, for over a decade, and that was to present these Bach gamba sonatas as a string trio, because in essence, they are a three-part adventure. So what you're going to hear tonight is uh, something we, we performed in 2017 with our good friend Isaac Pastor Shermet, who we met because of the project I did with Philip Wharton. But at any rate, Isaac uh, came, and came to Iowa City just to, just to play our concerts, uh, our children's concerts. Um, but Isaac has uh, been here quite a bit, and um, and so Adrian has some pretty big shoes to fill tonight, playing the left hand of the harpsichord obligato part. And of course, Mira has done this done this before, so it's no big deal for her. If 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 you'd like to keep track of the number of notes we play, you know, you're getting a bargain tonight. Thousands and thousands of notes. So did you mention it's a four movement work? Yeah. No. No. It's a four movement work, a sort of moderate tempo and then fast and then slow and fast. We really need to cheat. Yeah. Okay. We are not in the same.
manufactured some thunderous applause in our own home. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. What's next? So we have one more uh, work for you tonight, but it's a biggie. Um, this is an early string trio uh, by Beethoven for violin, viola, and cello. Um, and uh, it's Opus 9. His first string quartet was Opus, uh, Opus 18. His first set of string quartets were Opus 18. This was very early on. Uh, these are great works, but really challenging. And especially for the for the upper voices, because I, I think you know, I mean, Beethoven was a was a young composer, um, and he had uh, he had in his you know the whole system is for four voices, the whole system of composition, and he had in his mind I think a, what a string quartet should sound like, and so so often so frequently the violin or the viola or both are playing multiple voices playing double stops. Um, and it's quite a quite a big texture for three instruments, um, but at any rate, the uh, the 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 piece is is um, quite dramatic. It's very Beethoven. It's it's um, it's uh, dramatic in its dynamic contrast. It's beautiful in its uh, in its melodies and the slow movement is exquisite. And of course, it is. Uh, um, Virtuosic in the last movement, super, super quick. It also has um, uh, a, a scherzo with not one trio, but two trios. And so it's, it's, um, it's, uh, um, it's a lot of fun. So here is our violist come to join us. It's nice of you to join us. Yes, also. it is. <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> So uh, we'll go ahead and tune, and then... Uh, Wait, did we you know, ever introduce ourselves? <laughs> I don't know. That was your job. <laughs> did you do your job? Yeah, it was your I job. failed. We're Red Cedar Chamber Music. <laughs> I'm Mira Kim. I'm the violinist. This is... Oliver. Oh, yeah, and the executive director. <laughs> the heat is getting to me. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Boston, the artistic director, and then earlier, just now, Adrian Boston on the cello. What else did I need to say? Um, uh, I don't know. Oh, we're going to tune. Yeah, we're going to tune. Okay. Yeah.
for seeing us tonight. Uh, we'll be doing this two more times, and uh, then we're going to take the rest of the summer off. Um, but uh, we really appreciate all the support from many of you, and um, go ahead. And our uh, very special artist sponsors, Juanita Dennert and Schultz Strings, um, for this concert, uh, and many, many other people uh, we have to thank. Thank you so much for being here, and stay safe.